Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Uh, we're going to do a little kind of like pronostication, um, analysis, predictions, uh, based on the fact that it looks like Marty Toschetta, uh, the former capo in the Jersey crew of the Lucchese crime family, uh, is is getting some traction right now on his appeal effort uh, to try to get a, a racketeering murder case tossed based on uh, tampering, prosecu prosecutorial misconduct, and, and tampering of of evidence uh, that him and his attorneys say you know, prove uh, his alibi uh, tied to the summer 1984 murder of uh, Jimmy Sinatra, who was a Lucchese soldier. His real name was Vincent. Craparata, but went by the nickname Jimmy Sinatra, uh, who got beaten to death uh, with golf clubs in his uh, auto his auto dealership, uh, used auto cars out of Tom's River, um, was beaten to death by the Jersey crew on orders of the uh, Lucchese bosses in, in New York. A ton of legal drama was involved in all of this uh, over, a, over a decade, both state at the state level and the federal level, uh, longest trial in American history um, that was chronicled in the movie Find Me Guilty with Vin Diesel uh, talks about this. And uh, there were acquittals and then there were you know, another cases that were brought at uh, at different levels. Uh, Marty Chisetta was, was in uh, prison, uh, got the case thrown out initially, was out for three or four years in the 2000s, um, has been back in, I think, since 2011 or, or 12, and uh, the, 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 the case got reinstated. So the question that I'm asking right now is, are we going to see crazy Phil Leonetti on the stand when it comes to this evidentiary hearing that uh, Deschetto was granted earlier this month um, and a possible new trial because the, 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 the tampering on the prosecution side is connected to or partially connected to, to Crazy Phil's uh, testimony at, at some of the trials and um, how it compares to, to some of his debriefing documents when he flipped in 1989 compared to some of his testimony in, in the 90s. Uh, it doesn't match up. And then there is some documents from a dentist, uh, Marty Chisetta's dentist, that's, that shows that he was at the dentist's office when Jimmy Sinatra was murdered, couldn't have been at the murder scene, and that that, that dentist appointment document was A, uh, tampered with and hidden. Uh, so there's a lot of people now asking, you know, in order for for Marty decided to, to, to see freedom sooner rather than later. Does that mean that Phil Leonetti has to get back on the stand? And this is a, a you know, a, a guy that is, you know, close to my heart. I love Phil. I owe him a lot of my career I, for people that know me, know, I wrote his uh, co-wrote his uh, autobiography, Mafia Prince. Um, and uh, you know, he is a historical figure that was a, a really big deal in the seventies and eighties became a huge, Mafia turncoat, one of the highest ranking guys to ever flip but when he cut his deal in 89. And uh, but hasn't been a guy that, you know, has hit the circuit, per se, as you've seen a lot of these other former uh, mob guys that that joined Team Team USA, the Michael Francis the Sammy the Bulls and other a multitude of others that you can find on MobTube. Um, so. And I know that George and Dave over at uh, Mop Talk Sit Down were also um, asking these questions, kind of pondering, uh, thinking aloud on how this could bring Phil Leonetti back into the spotlight. You know, he was the underboss under his, his uncle, uh, the murderous, volatile, maniacal little Nicky Scarfo in the 80s, cop to... Um, you know, more than 10 murders, I only did about five, six years, has been a witness protection for the last 30 plus, and uh, is really living a living his best life. And, you know, I tip my captain whenever I talk about it. He's the only, I've met a lot of former high-ranking mob guys, high-ranking drug kingpins, 
um, high ranking crime lords from, uh, you know, various other criminal factions and to almost every single one of them longs for the past and want to be back in their old life. Phil, to his credit, uh, just wants to be a regular Joe and, and has no affinity for the, for the life. Um, but he might be dragged back up into this, back out into the soap opera. Um, I, I would guess based on what we're seeing in these court filings and, and this uh, ruling that came down in, uh, in, in New Jersey, this month there'll be an evidentiary hearing next month in february and uh if if that goes well there could be a new trial and uh we're phil leonetti's gonna have to get up on the stand potentially and he's gonna have to reconcile uh what was in his his 302 debriefing in 89 uh where he claimed that i that he had no knowledge of uh who, who were the hitters in this? And then when he got on the stand saying that uh, both Tommy Ricciardi and Marty Tricetta admitted to him, you know, in, in conversations uh, when they were all on the street that they had, he had killed Jimmy Sinatra. Tommy Ricciardi, uh, who allegedly was the kind of the lead hitman, uh, flipped and uh, testified. They were all working under Tumac Asatoro, who was the capo at that time. And, uh, Jimmy Sinatra was a guy that kind of wanted to, he had wanted to try to kind of play both sides of the fence. He was claiming that he had, was, was, was retiring from the life after he had done a prison sentence. But at the same time, he, he had his hands in some uh, Joker poker rackets and uh, had his nephews uh, uh, running a pretty big Joker poker uh, operation. And uh, Luke Cage just wanted a piece of it. And Sinatra wouldn't give him that piece of it. And it, it ended up with him being murdered the situation after that murder is almost equally compelling because there was like five or six months of uh, of back and forths and sit downs between the philadelphia mafia and the uh, lucchese's about who would control these these nephews of, of jimmy sinatra's um tumac asatorio and, and the jersey guys eventually won those sit downs and you know according to leonetti uh the nephews you know they turned like purple you know, turn blue uh, when the decision came down. And that's how uh, in fear they were for their, for their lives. But uh, uh, Tumac also flipped. So, you know, the Tachettas uh, were left kind of holding the bag and uh, they're related to the Pernas, you know, uh, New Jersey, Lucchese mob royalty. So we'll see, but I, I find it inevitable if this thing goes uh, at the very least at, at the trial a stage you'll see Phil back on the stand um, and possibly at, at, at an evidentiary hearing, you know, in the coming months. So that's my uh, analysis. And I wanted to keep everybody in the loop about what's going down with that uh, Jimmy Sinatra murder case. And if Marty Trichetta can ever taste freedom again, he's a guy, he's in the, he's in the seventies, uh, was a capo at one time uh, for the Jersey Lucchese crew. Um, his brother, Michael Mad Dog is out and his cousins, the, the Pernas are, uh, you know, they've been holding holding the fort down for most of the last 20 years at least. So for OG Pod, I'm Scott Bernstein. I am out. Mm -hmm.